So with a question like this, you simply go and take each part and just make it more simplified. So let me show you exactly what to do. So with cos 130, I'm going to show you each one separately. So cos 130. The angle 130 is in quadrant 2. Now in quadrant 2, we would want to write it as 180 minus x. So we convert this into 180 minus 50 because that is still 130. So we haven't really changed anything. And then we know that cos is negative in that quadrant. So that just becomes negative cos 50. Now for sin of 90 minus, that is a co-function and you need to know all four of them. So I'll write them out for you guys. And there are other ways of doing all these questions. So if you're using a different method to me, you're not necessarily wrong, just make sure you get to the same answer. Okay, so this one here becomes cos theta, this one becomes sin theta, this is cos theta, and then this one is negative sin theta. So you guys should write those down, because I see a lot of students, they know that there's these co-functions, and then they forget about them, and then a question comes, and they're like, oh, I can't remember how to do those. Just write them down, memorize them, just like your special triangles. All right, so here, sin 90 minus theta, look at that, cos theta. So we can, so that one just becomes cos theta. Okay, now sin of 400. 400 is too big for this cast diagram. So what you do is you minus 360. So you're allowed to do that, because let's say it is here. If you minus 360, you're still going to be there. So you're not changing the position. So sin 400 is the same as sin 40, because we minus 360 and so sin 40 is already reduced so we don't actually have to do anything there that's actually an easy one so that's just sin 40 and then many students are tempted to just make this negative cos theta because they think that the negative just comes out that's not the way it works what you do instead is you realize that this is not something that we usually have on the cost diagram so we add 360 you're allowed to do that remember you're allowed to add or minus 360 and so we can add 360 like that. Now, when you plus, the order doesn't matter. So you can switch this. Aha, and so now we have something that's useful or that's we more common to us. And so we know that cos is positive in that quadrant. So it actually just becomes positive cos theta. And here you thought that the negative goes in the front. So be careful about that. And so this part becomes cos theta. And so now what we do is we just go fill that in. So negative cos 50. So notice how we did each part separately. They don't link together. So it's like that. And then sin 40 plus cos theta. Ooh, this is quite a good one. So guys, we cannot cancel like that. That's a very common mistake that I see. It's because we have more than one term at the top. So this one's quite weird. But what we can do is realize that these are co-functions because they add up to 90. So choose one of them and change it. So I'm going to choose this top one. We know... Now the proper way to show a cofunction is the following. So I'm just going to write it as negative cos 50. Okay, so what you do is you replace cos 50 with cos of 90 minus 40. That's the same, right? Because 90 minus 40 is 50. So we haven't done anything. We've just written it in a different way. But now with our cofunctions that you guys would have written down just now, we know that cos 90 minus x just becomes sin x. So then what does cos 90 minus 40 become? Well, it just becomes sin 40. So then in the next step, you would have changed this. Let me actually just write it down. So that's going to become negative sin 40, whoops, minus cos theta over sin 40 plus cos theta. And so what you should identify now is that if we take out a negative as a common factor at the top, you're going to end up with sin 40 plus cos theta. And then at the bottom, we'll just leave it as it is. And then what happens is that the top and bottom can now cancel because they are exactly the same. And so we'll just be left with negative 1.